Okay. That means I'm going to have to look at the stories. <laughs> oh, wait, we're live. And I said That's that a- out loud. <laughs> they, they all know we don't know what we're talking about or doing. Yeah, we, we might never, know what we're talking we about. Never we never prepared. know what we're doing. We're talking about news. It's in the name of the show. Wait, oh, wait I it didn't, is? I didn't. Um, now I've lost the damn browser tab I had the news in. <laughs> It. I can, I can just go on Google you. and type the news. You will find everything you need to know. Oh, yeah. yes. You can trust everything that you find in the news. Oh, you pasted the link again? Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. Now Corey can have it, too. All right. Cool. There, right? Yeah. Here we go. News stories. This oh, week. I'm here. Oh, yeah. I just found that I did. Ha- How often does this have happen to you? You're like, okay, I've lost the tab. And then you click on it again. You're like, oh, this looks like a, exactly like the other tab I had. Wait. <laughs> brain fought anyway let's say it's um, pretty common for me that i'll be like where did i put that tab and i'll find it i like broke it out to a separate window which has been like shoved to the back of all of the other windows <laughs> right <laughs> and then like at some point i decide i should restart my computer and so i close down stuff and i'm like oh that's where that tab went that's that's usually how it works for me <laughs> So in really a, important, I've news been today. loving the new tab groups in Safari just for that reason. I've got oh, group, they have maybe tab twenty group? groups of tabs now, and well, the way it works is pretty slick. Yeah. I do like it. I, I, you know, I can't. I just can't go there. I'm, I'm I've got a hate hate relationship now with my. Uh, uh, my I know I'm in the minority group. with actually using Safari. I yeah. I started using it too, and I'm not gonna lie. I've kind of grown to enjoy it more. Wow sacrilegious no <laughs> the one thing that was hard is finding like a javascript and ad blocker that actually worked <laughs> like that took me a while oh i got right. that yeah i've got that too it's, it's not custom it's not a free it, one but it's a good one mine's a custom just, I think or, using, automated I think DNS, one blocker the DNS right zone. Now. that's what my favorite I, that's web browser is internet explorer installed on linux running through wine that's that's secure dude if they if right. they break it there, what could what could go wrong? What are they going to do? Right, run the wrong shell code for the wrong OS? Right. They'll, they'll have no idea what to do. Yeah. The yeah. ultimate security. Internet Explorer. That's why I run Temple OS on my daily driver. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't I, I hack be, what you don't know. You know what? I, I just, just want to be like Corey when I grow up. It's <laughs> Wow, is that weird? You already are. You, Joff, we're too similar, man. You, you got <laughs> you, you to stop. I know it's scary. Wait, wait till we actually get together at a conference. You better, that's, you better buckle in, everybody. That's not good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like it's like like when John and I get on a, a webcast together. It's like you don't want to cross the streams. It's just a bad idea. Um, so, wow, it's four twenty nine. It's almost time. Almost time. So you know, unlike you people, I bet you you didn't work out today, but I did. I worked off the turkey. I didn't so. do a workout, but I did go for a walk. Okay, yeah, you get points for that. Took the dog for a walk. I haven't moved in approximately three days, but I did hike 20 <laughs> miles over the weekend, so it's okay. You just ate turkey at your desk? I, I'm so actually, show you. we did Thanksgiving early. Then we just went to the Redwoods and just camped for all of Thanksgiving. To just, it was fun. Actually, that, that sounds remarkably awesome. Um, it was. It was fun, I'm going to show you, Corey. I had a mad coding session over the holidays, so I can't wait. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah so I got I got some goodies. Anyway, not for the show. All right, mm. I haven't moved for five days, says Disco. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, the clock just turned four thirty Eastern time, one thirty Pacific, and whatever the hell it is, Mountain, because we don't know what happens in the flyover states. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, why didn't you hit it, man? (laughs) All right, let's do it. And we're live. It's talking about news. I guess I'm the senior host of the crew right now, so I'm going to introduce us. We've got Noah returning. He's becoming a veteran. He doesn't think so, but I think so. We got Corey also becoming a veteran. And we got newcomer Joff. Newcomer, right? He just newcomer. started BHIS, yeah. right? Yeah, just <laughs> first, just, day. Just no, first day. He's been here a couple shows now and 
great addition to the to the crew. Yo yes, says so- cyber nutrition. And Trish, speaking like, of flyover states, uh, this this episode is sponsored by Spearfish South Dakota. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, so, you know, this is this is Cyber Monday, right? So we're gonna call this. I I hate that term. First of all, I'm gonna call it Thanksgiving Hangover Monday, uh, because I think that's much more apropos. What do you think? I think we just call it like "You're Out of Leftovers" by now, and you're just sad. Oh no, I still well. have plenty of leftovers. <laughs> Yeah, tonight tonight's gonna desserts. be a leftovers meal night for sure. That's true. I did eat all the desserts. Yeah, like the desserts are the first to go. I just have like a four pound bag of turkey now. The A team is is done. The B team is coming. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so h- how many people we got listening, Ryan? Do we know? So uh, we got a, right now about nineteen, I believe. Wow, big crowd! Uh, <laughs> It'll grow. So, uh, It'll grow. Yeah. Are you trying to like? See how many lawsuits are about to get Joff? Like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh, double, double hell no. Um, well, at that yeah. size, we're already getting ready to look at a class action, so we're good. It, it doesn't get worse yeah. at this point. Speaking of lawsuits, speaking, yeah, speaking of lawsuits, nice. let's get right into the news, shall we? I think we should. I think we should. So, that, so the very and first story. What is that, Ryan? The biggest story I think we've had in the past week is. If my internet will load a website, it's about uh, Apple suing NSO. Well, Ryan broke the internet. That's a I great way it. to start Monday. <laughs> <laughs> NSO, so, that doesn't my internet, exist. He was oh, here we go. How great Safari was. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an interesting title, right? Apple sues NSO Group to curb the abuse of state-sponsored spyware. Spy- Haven't yeah. a bunch of people sued NSO Group? It's at this point, it's like. Like I'm pretty sure Facebook did because they used WhatsApp or sorry, Meta, uh, because they used uh, WhatsApp to like, I, I don't know. There was a bunch of them. There was a bunch yeah. of people trying to sue NSO group. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's going to happen, right? The stuff's going to come out. Um, I suppose you can sue them. Right, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Is, yeah. is it actually going to be successful? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the, a response. The, it is cool. The crazy thing is that I would, well, I mean, this is all, I don't know. I'm not, I don't work for the NSO group, obviously, but the, I assume that I, what I've heard is they don't do business in the U.S. as the NSO group. So I'm interested, I, I'm interested to see how this, you know, is it a, is it an international lawsuit or is it like, are they targeting, is Apple targeting the, um, you know, the, whatever business they are running as in the U.S.? It's also interesting because the you know the U.S. probably pays for some of these tools, so it's like. Oh, NSO Group has uh, has basically publicly stated that the U.S. uses some of their tools, because at one point the U.S. was uh, sending bad bad uh, just throwing a little shame their way, and they pretty much came back and responded with, "Well, even the U.S. uses our tools, and they they normally don't tell you who their customers are, are um, but they very blatantly said that the U.S. is using their tools." Yeah, so I mean, so what what interests me is is how uh, how this is sort of a theme with with some companies that t- tend to want to go after um, uh, these kind of groups, but but also in a way, I think it's related to the culture or not not culture of accepting responsible disclosure, um, and and not that I want to necessarily pivot here, but. But we all know that Apple's had this very closed source kind of approach to everything, right? It's our goodies, it's our goodies, it's our goodies. You're not you're not allowed to you're not allowed to hack them and 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 go away, right? <laughs> so, well, and and their bug bounty uh, program is known for not being the best as well. So yeah. that doesn't help. Well, at least they have one now, right? They do. I mean, they do. They didn't used to in, in not too distant uh, past. So uh, maybe the culture is changing a little bit, but. Um, yeah, aside from that, well, you know, lawsuit's a lawsuit. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, and uh, it'll also be interesting to see, you know, where, where this is really going, right? We've seen this this activity of, of these sort of only zero days been let out on the street. And, and um, you know, what is this going to become? <laughs> like a competition to the coolest uh, sploits just sort of blown out there when people want them. I mean, it's it's kind of bizarre. Yeah, I mean, NSO has bragged before about like, hey, we have all the hacks. You can patch it. 
you can do whatever you want, but we have more. So it's interesting, like Apple, of course, from a PR perspective, it doesn't want that perception like, oh yeah, they just have all the hacks against us. Like they're, you know, the, obviously they want to support. The real question is, does the $10 million to cybersecurity research include free dev licenses for Apple? Pro like, can I get a dev? Can I just start writing Apple code now, Objective-C, without having to pay $99 to install to my device? Or is that still not a thing? <laughs> So I, I somehow think, first of all, that a, uh, a state, state uh, you know, funded hacking group uh, probably doesn't really have a problem with the $99. <laughs> just, well, they just said they created 100 accounts. They, they, in, the, in the article, it says they made 100 accounts and agreed to the terms and conditions for developers. <laughs> That's how they even got the lawsuit, right? Because NSO Group created accounts to use for, yeah. for um, exploit dev. I mean, doesn't this ultimately, this is what I'm thinking, doesn't this ultimately end up being awesome PR for the NSA, NSO group? I mean, right? And at the same time, not awesome PR for Apple it's in the same yeah. article. <laughs> I don't think NSO group needs any more PR at this point. They're probably like, uh, we're no, good. We got the 60 yeah. minutes thing. After that, it's all downhill for me. They're, they're getting too much exposure. They they would prefer yeah. kind of back in the shadows just a little bit. And... Uh, it, it, it's almost, I, I would say that their days are possibly numbered just because they've got too much exposure. They they need to sink back if they want to, to keep going. Well, you know what? They'll just go, um, they, they will go through the same process that any corporate entity goes through. And that is, you know, sink back into the background, rebrand themselves, <laughs> and uh, then they'll be called some other three-letter agency, right? Uh, oh, know, yeah. It won't, it, won't, it won't be a problem. I mean, you know. <clears throat> Same matter. tactic the ransomware gangs <laughs> use when they get too much exposure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You got to let those domains, you know, stew for a while and get recategorized as, as unknown. Right. Right. Well, there it is. I think we should move on to the next story. I don't know. I'm not very excited about this one. <laughs> it is cool that they supported citizen lab and those guys, who, those people do really cool work. And I don't, I mean, I'm assuming those $10 million are mostly going to them but I don't know. Nice segue into the next story is a comment here. How Apple is now warning others um, that they may have been targeted by the NSO attack, or whatever you want to call it. That is yeah. so funny because the researchers that, that or the exploit developers at, at NSO are probably like, oh man, now all of our accounts are burned. <laughs> pretty much got to make a well, new password I, I think what's even funnier is that they're notifying those users that were targeted using apple technology which is potentially compromised right. so well what, apple would never the, use anyone else's products what what's the uh what's to stop the nso from intercepting the notification and modifying <laughs> right. that's why in, in in round two of it what they'll do is they'll mail you an android phone in the mail and on that phone will be a notepad document <laughs> saying hey we think you've been hacked ah <laughs> right <sighs> oh classic um anyway all right so uh they'll they'll alert customers all right well, maybe the, I think they did say in the article that they're alerting customers Bentley. through the web portal as well, possibly. Yeah, the ID Apple ID site. Yeah, it shows well right here. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. who uses that portal? Do you know anyone that does? <laughs> Nobody. Because <laughs> I didn't even. You know only that go existed. in there and use that portal if you need to change your password or your email or something like that, or you're removing right. an old device from your account. Well, also, I mean. Maybe you guys never lose your iPhones, but if I ever have to use the like find my iPhone functionality, you it's in there as well. Once and just remember, from... just remember, kids, don't click on links or attachments from unknown senders. That is true. I, I got a text message from <laughs> Apple. Yeah, I got a text message from Apple that says I'm being hacked. I better log in. <laughs> <laughs> it's totes legit. Totes. Especially legit. considering that's one of uh, Pegasus's. Uh, vectors of compromise is through text message yeah it's through probably, a text message link yeah. like a link you click from a text message they'll probably like just if i if i worked there i would be sending 
phishing campaigns right now that said your account has been compromised by Pegasus. You need to log in immediately. <laughs> right. with, yeah. You know, with obviously the drop. Corey, Corey stop Pegasus. giving them ideas. They Sorry. might be listening. <laughs> Right, this right. Is and, for and, entertainment and, purposes only. That's right. And in particular, because today is Cyber Monday, put an unsubscribe button at the bottom because it's Cyber Monday. <laughs> right? Not funny? Too soon? Is NSO oh, Group no, not no. having, are they not having a sale? A Cyber Monday sale? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 40% off. Discount sale. Get your Down- wares here. <laughs> Download Pegasus on one device, get the second device free. <laughs> Well, that's I by like default, it. isn't it? Because you just use the device. I mean, use the software. You get the second device for free. That's no, lateral movement isn't included. Always. <laughs> that, that costs extra. <laughs> that costs extra. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You have to get Pegasus brought... Plus for that. It's a five ninety nine a month All right. subscription. <laughs> And then, next and then story. you go to next Pegasus story. Excelsior Plus Plus. I think we have to go to the next story. Yeah, next story. Yeah, next story. <laughs> we're giving, we're giving. Not leave an Android alone. Ideas. They're, they're going to DM me and be like, "Hey, can you be our PR person, please?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like this story. I love, I love stories about millions of Android phones running malware apps from Huawei, no less. Okay, the, the, the reason I love this story so much is because. In the course of the work that I've done on the Android operating system, I've acquired various extremely inexpensive Chinese manufactured entertainment devices, right? And most of them run Android. And one of the very first things I've done when I've got these things like, you know, TV streaming devices and stuff, one of the very first things I do when I get it is hook it up with the debugger to to my system and see if uh, I can root the Android operating system. You'll never guess what, (laughs) and this just kills me. Most of them were running older versions of Android. That won't surprise anybody, but a pretty fair percentage of them, this is non-statistical, non-scientific statistical sampling here, but a pretty fair percentage were already rooted. I was gonna say, I knew that was coming. (laughs) I knew it was coming. So all you did was, in fact, a lot of them had sudo already on the, just sudo on the box. And it was like, oh, a root prompt. Sweet. Yeah, I had, I had some Android device at one point I went to go try and root and uh, hooked it up to the debugger, like was getting ready to go to do the work of of doing the actual rooting process and uh, just logged in and it dropped me in the root terminal. I'm like, oh, well, that was easy, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's how we're going to play today. Wasn't Huawei yeah. already like banned by the government? Like they, they're not. You're not allowed if you work for the government. You're not allowed to use Huawei phones or something. Isn't this? I think like, it was a thing like that. Uh, sometime they're ago, kind but... of already on the ropes as far as supply, like suppliers in the U.S. go. I mean, obviously, uh, private citizens can still use it, but I mean, it's it's another story. I mean, let me kick out my bingo, bingo card and cross off supply chain attack or you know bad app stores, right? Like. Where are you getting right. your apps? Probably matters. Although there were a lot of free games on the Huawei app, whatever it's called, App Source or whatever. Well, and I'm yeah, trying to. It's think. not just the U.S. There's a lot of countries Sorry, still gallery. buying Huawei. Yeah. Yeah, Huawei App Store. If I recall, I, there was an article about it a while back where, um, if you were to say you wanted an app from the Huawei App Store, and it wasn't actually in their App Store, what it would do is just download the APK from the third-party vendor website. But then it would sign it for you and run it. Um, <laughs> so, so it's what could just possibly video. go wrong. So right? Yeah, like... yeah. It would just go download the APK from their website and then sign it because it probably wasn't signed. So it would sign it for you and then install it as a Huawei app. Oh, let, let me fix that step. for you. You forgot a step. It, they, the download from the third party web store, backdoor, then sign it and then deliver it to you. There you go. Congratulations, you've got a Huawei app. <laughs> yeah, it will be interesting to see how they respond, whether they implement better, you know, whether, you know, I guess bust out your tinfoil hats. Was it their malware? Was it someone else's malware that made its way into the app store because they have poor controls on their apps? Or who knows? But I mean, they've they've gotten the heat before. I don't foresee them changing for this. And also just, just point out, I mean, we've talked about on this show before, the tinfoil hats. They're highly effective. You need gold foil hats. 
True. <laughs> oh, true. True. You know, it was funny. I was I was looking around for my tinfoil hat, and well, now I now I need an upgrade, according to Noah. Right. You do. But, yeah, I cannot find the gold foil hat, and you know, it would be very important. There's a lot of head to cover here, so I would go for Capton because it's heat resistant. Could be good for you, Josh. Oh yeah, that's all right. Accessories, man. You didn't know we accessorize here on the news. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. You know, one of the big stories we haven't talked about is the GoDaddy breach. GoDaddy was breached? No oh way. Goodness. <laughs> Which one? Oh, oh wait, you mean Which the newest one? one? <laughs> the newest breach. It, it keeps happening over and over again. Why does this keep happening? Uh, I Why think it's get because they have one of, I think it's because they have one of the ugliest websites I've ever visited. <laughs> <laughs> This must have something to do with it. People just, they, they just, they hate hack it. They're like, I hate the way it looks. I have to breach it. They're actually yeah. trying to hack in so that way they can fix the website. They're, they're a bunch of web developers <laughs> trying to design a new one just because it's so horrendous. I'm sorry. Like, I'm reading this article and I feel like it's 2009. Is it? Like, it is. You stepped into the Wayback Machine. You just didn't know it. They, they had a, oh, it was the, okay, wait, never mind. I'm sorry. It was the managed WordPress system. Okay, never mind. I thought that GoDaddy was running WordPress in production. I was very confused. Well, wait. I mean, okay. First of all, um, the WordPress plugin ecosystem is is one of the most frequently compromised thing things that's out there. Um, non scientific survey, okay. Um, but uh, you know, I I've uh, I, I do this other thing called Security Weekly once in a while, and the number of times we've talked about WordPress plugins. I mean. Almost every second show, something <laughs> with WordPress is going to be in there. Um, so the fact well, that... I think it has like yeah. like 70% of the market share or something like that. Some ridiculously high part of the market share. Well, I was going to say, the fact that WordPress became a, 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 an attack vector doesn't surprise me at all, right? Um, I feel a little sorry for GoDaddy, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, WordPress can, can get you. Uh, and so uh, it was their managed WordPress hosting service. Maybe it was, it's like an abstracted version, right? So like you, you go to GoDaddy, you get WordPress, but you don't have to like apt install. So I wonder, yeah, I wonder if it like was some kind of permissions abuse or something like that in the, the way that it's doing this managed system. Like I wonder if it's an API thing or something. Yeah. So we, we, we you know, this is a, first of all, this is kind of a podcast thing and we speculate like, speculate like crazy. So, you know, don't, don't, <laughs> don't take anything that we're saying to be the God's honest truth. Otherwise you're really foolish. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, if it was the managed service, it may not have been WordPress itself. That was the vector for the attack. In fact, yeah. uh, looking, looking at it, um, the article now that I'm starting to read it, uh, it doesn't look like WordPress itself was involved as the attack vector. No, um, they, they compromised the, the service that they give to their customers of managing right. their WordPress. And stuff. Yeah, yeah it I mean, it's all hearsay. Me. I don't think they've published a debrief or anything like that yet. So Right, right. They're saying, people are speculating that it could be a compromised credential, uh, like you know, maybe a dev credential or something. Well, inspired. see, that wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me in the least. I mean, how many times when... We've been doing pen tests, you know, have we gone after either, you know, dev credentials or cloud credentials, um, you know, all of the, whether it's an API service, whether it's a GitHub or some developer entity, you know, that's gold right there. If you can guess one of those credentials and, and normally they're not too hard to guess, I hate to tell you. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, key keywords, you know, leverage, core competency, supply chain. There we go. Yeah, from what I've seen, it looks like a compromised credential. But then they're talking about the fact that if it was a compromised credential, they're, they're eating on them for possibly not having MFA in place with that credential. Terminator. Right, and it could have been an API, right? I mean, I wonder how many APIs are sitting out there that are just, you know, single-factor authentication APIs that are being used behind the scenes. Uh, and in this context, it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, if there right. was some sort of API that was back there doing some, you know, JSON RESTful kind of transaction and yeah. uh yeah it was compromised okay. yeah i mean the priority is uptime and making sales right i mean 
they want their websites to work and there's probably a ton of support people that have access to backends and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I like access to my backend normally. So <laughs> wait, what, what are we talking about? No, I am not having a stroke. <laughs> He's just talking about rooting his Android phone. No big deal. Um, so, All right, moving on. Is there what else we got? <laughs> We're just ripping through these, right? The data is uh, not public yeah. yet. Weird... Yet. So, but change your passwords. I, I, I mean, like obviously, that... you know. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say I like this one. I, I kind of like that. Uh oh, we're losing Josh a little bit here. Can the, you got robot the, voice? I think that Ryan's going to this. Uh, Win local uh, privilege escalation. Hello? This is actually kind of cool. Hello. Is that the zero day Joff. one you're talking about, Joff? Is yeah. It, is it working? Joff, tell everyone, tell, yeah. tell everyone in your house to stop <laughs> watching <laughs> 4K Netflix. Vulnerability. Yeah. <laughs> or just stop watching Netflix yourself, at least, to start with. <laughs> Joff is like right, watching Netflix. To... <laughs> He's watching Dune during the show. He's like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. I don't care. Uh, well, no, anyway, I, not, I believe yeah. Joff is talking about I'm, this article right here. Yeah, I think he's new Windows back, Zero too. Day. What can the experts tell us? Because I'm not an expert. So, Noah, Corey. I mean, uh, to my understanding, when I read through this, this is not a Zero Day anymore. Uh, there is a patch for it. So, uh, biggest takeaway is update your stuff. But uh, it, yeah, as to the how it works, I'm um, not totally sure. The, the cool, the thing that kind of well, brings a, it a, to... actually, actually, that's not quite it because there was a patch re released for the first vulnerability, and the patch was ineffective and could be bypassed. And so I don't think it has been patched yet. At least what I read, uh, oh, the bypass okay. for uh, the bypass for the patch. Uh, so it is a significant issue, and. Uh, I was going to say, if anybody, um, there's a proof of concept published there too. And if anybody has, um, you know, uh, an assumed compromise engagement in the company right now, that's an awesome way to get local system privileges. <laughs> right. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the big thing that I found interesting about it was actually how it was disclosed, um, which they spent almost the last half of the article talking about mostly. Uh, they did a public disclosure on this rather than working with Microsoft simply because, um, Microsoft has been reducing the value of their bug bounties uh, over time. So they're getting cheaper and cheaper with their bug bounties. So as a response, they actually did this uh, public disclosure instead of working with the Microsoft bug bounty program. That's... But Jeff, if you, have, if you want to speak to the coolness of how this works, by all means, go for it. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm not really aware of the coolness of how it works because I didn't actually get a chance to download the POC and try it and, and look at the code. So that's as far as I got. I don't know. Maybe Corey and his, you know, amazing leet self has downloaded the, the proof. <laughs> Whoa, code. you assume I, you, you assume that th there's so many things in that sentence that were wrong, but no, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> tried. I, I haven't tried this one out on my local Windows VM, but I do, I do think it's patched. As of November, I think it's patched. But the ver there's two variants, and I think there's a variant that is. I mean, I guess we got to test it. Yeah, we got to test the puck. The second, I, I did read this over the weekend. I did look at it. I almost got to download it. The second variant that bypasses the original patch, I don't think that has been patched. Um, but it's probably going to be really shortly. Um, well, you know, normally Microsoft's not too fond of uh, privilege escalation vulnerabilities, so or letting anyone get system. In general. Yeah, it's already in the wild yeah. too, which is funny. Yeah, that that happens quick these days. It's amazing. Uh, so, well, I mean, it was. I can't, I can't wait till we get to the story honestly. after after the next one. By the way, because well, we can skip around. We can go right oh, to the. Yeah, there's, there's no rules, can... There's no, yeah, there's there's no, no rules. rules. Because the title of attackers don't bother brute forcing long passwords makes me giggle. <laughs> because right, let's do that one. Let's get yeah, into yeah. the pedantics of what brute forcing even is. Well, so that's that's actually important. We should talk about that, right? Technically, if we're going to be 
precise. If you are brute forcing a password, then you are attempting to guess every possible iteration of every character at every position in the password, right? So, but the the common parlance parlance is not is just password guessing is called brute forcing, right? <laughs> right, right. And so right. why why I'm giggling is because here here at Black Hills, when we are, are playing password cracking games we use a hybrid approach. We use brute forcing for sure, but we also use dictionary-based attacks. And I know for certain that the penetration testers on our team at Black Hills, in some cases, have guessed passwords that in excess of 20 characters using dictionary-based approaches. Yeah. Uh, or hybrid. But what this is, this is talking about get password guessing, right? They say brute force, but really the data is from SSH password attempts on honeypots. Okay. So that's so. a dictionary based attack, though, right? Typically. Probably. Yeah. Unless they're like password zero, 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 zero. That's not an intelligent way to attack <laughs> a, a system with a single Next password zero, 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 one. I mean, honestly, in, in the I Internet of it. Things, in the Internet of Things, that is a pretty effective way because the Internet of Things usually has tiny little short passwords, right? But in the, in the world of. Uh, um, Someone has an echo. Okay. <laughs> echo, is it me? Echo? I don't Check. know who it is. You, You're good, Jeff. All right. Uh, but in the world of, of, of um, authentication that is not fixed in the device, in the world where people are doing it and there's decent password policies, well, often we find longer passwords or passphrases, right? And so the assertion that we're not trying to brute force... See, it all it all comes down to that that pedantic definition of brute force. Dictionary attacks, if you if they fall under brute force in your mind, then the article's kind of funny to me. As in basically, it makes sense because they, what the article is saying is that most people who are attempting to password guess uh, SSH and RDP are using really short passwords, which checks out because if you're an attacker going after this stuff, it's automated. Number one, number two it probably you want to self select for the weak systems anyway right if the, if you log into a system well, with no, a that's a good character point. password then it probably has like restricted permissions it probably has monitoring but if you log into a system with like root root it's like probably you're just going to you know do right. whatever you need deploy your crypto miner probably and then move on with your life right in fact probably most attacks that are going after things that are weak like that are going to use a list of manufacturer default passwords and and commonly human chosen short passwords as their first line of attack. Um, so so yeah. the real question is, number one, who's exposing SSH with password off on the internet? Number two, who's exposing RDP on the internet? You know, that blows my mind. Um, <laughs> well, and they, and they also mentioned VNC. Like in the quote, they mentioned VNC, which VNC is fun because according to the RFC, it can only have a maximum of eight characters unless you are using something that's an unofficial bolt-on security that lets you make the password longer. Yeah. I know what the answer is. Everybody's go to IPv6 right now so we can make the address space like sparsely scattered and so we can't actually scan the entire internet. See, that's the thing a lot of people don't realize is there are projects out there that have scanned the entire internet for all of these services and regularly document them, <laughs> right? So the fact that you have an open listening RDP port or an opening open listening SSH port out on the net is documented. And able to be looked up <laughs> by many people. But Joff, I put SSH on port 2222, two, 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 so you can't hack me. Oh, you man. Two, you are so two. elite. You know, do you know how elite Mr. Corey <laughs> is? I mean, it, it just. <laughs> my heart I'm is so elite, open. I haven't even downloaded the new Microsoft POC. <laughs> uh, you know sarcasm is terrible but i shouldn't i shouldn't be doing that port 2222 is not a protection <laughs> fyi right i'm not going to assume oh, that yeah. everybody no and if it's rdp they'll find it they'll find it almost as quick as if you put it on 3389 um yeah i, I used to do some you can do an initial protocol handshake right and you can oh, work yeah. out this is remote desktop protocol or this is ssh yeah, and it, and it, I used to do it, and you could figure it out. You'd put a brand new system on the internet, like directly on the internet. Open up RDP. You'd make it up in like AWS or something like that. Put the logs on it so you could see like uh, like Sysmon's network connection, 
and it'd be like five minutes before someone in Russia would be connecting to it. <laughs> okay, but next question: What if I put a banner on RDP that says "Only authorized personnel only"? Does that? Oh well, then that stops hacked? everything. Deadness okay. tracks like nothing. Okay, nothing gets past that. Good. The ultimate because that, that's what I've that's what I've been thinking about doing, and so I'm glad that that's like an effective security control. Yes, yeah. you're funny. Well, oh, all or, right. What else we got? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe you should change your banner. Corey, to I'm going to throw what you know like if you have a gaggle <laughs> of birds or, or a flock of geese or something like that what's a collection of lawyers called is it a is there a word for a collection a of briefcase lawyers? it's called a briefcase I'm going to throw a briefcase of lawyers at you <laughs> alright sorry I just had that was a go back I just had to say that I was going to say right. gaggle but briefcase is better it's a gag order <laughs> A, a gaggle, gaggle is a, a much gaggle it's a, order of lawyers. There you go. A, a gaggle <laughs> is an extremely like that's too peppy and fun. That that's not. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now, so Ryan, part. tell us about Bitcoin ATMs that you totally knew about before this article existed. I didn't know anything about Bitcoin. Bitcoin ATMs. I'm going to refer to you because you have more Bitcoin knowledge than I do, Corey. You never been like in a you know grocery store and it says buy Bitcoin here and you're like oh see my no. grocery store just lets me buy my groceries directly with Bitcoin so okay do you live in Estonia or something <laughs> I'm, I'm doing I have a Chinese food <laughs> restaurant actually that will let me buy Chinese food with Bitcoin but that's the only that's place practical. the only place around me that takes crypto are dispensaries <laughs> so Bitcoin wow. ATMs basically for anyone that doesn't know would be Equivalent to like a cash ATM, but instead of buying or, you know, transacting with cash or transacting with Bitcoins, you can turn cash into Bitcoins. So you can get anonymous with big air quotes, Bitcoins. Um, and shocker, people who would walk into a store and put cash into a machine and receive, retrieve basically a QR code, that process is somehow being targeted by attackers. Go figure. Which is... We know that criminals never target ATMs. <laughs> criminals do not target ATMs in the real world. Like it's not like there's a thousand videos on the internet of people no. pulling up with a truck, wrapping a chain around an ATM, and then pulling it out of a gas station. So, to me, this is definitely newsworthy that Bitcoin ATMs are being targeted. Well, not but, to mention, you can put a lot more money in a Bitcoin ATM because it takes much less space to store a Bitcoin. So, well, yeah, you can't just walk up with fifty whatever it is thousand dollars in cash and buy one Bitcoin. <laughs> Right and now, yeah, I know what like Ralph is doing with all those hard drives. <laughs> that, my friends, is why Noah is the most valued employee at Black Hills Information Security. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, basically, so it's a classic, you know, like it's technology that people don't totally understand, so they don't know where to look for the BS, right? So, like, they'll, you know, there's QR codes that actually send the uh, money to the attacker instead of to the ATM, and etc. It's just. It's like a skimming attack kind of similar approach where you're just, you know, scan me or whatever, like fake instructions kind of thing. But yeah, so basically don't use a Bitcoin ATM is the, uh, you know, you can, you can buy those organic and non-GMO from other places. Only organic uh, Bitcoin for Corey. Did anybody else have a sudden organic urge to check, their, uh, to check their favorite, uh, you know, Bitcoin uh, account? Coinbase in my case, my case. Yeah, I think no, just send me your private key. I'll, would I'll be my favorite. It. I'll send it. Up. I'll send it right over. Send I'll me send your private over. key. I'll check it for you. I'll send it over port four 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 because that's leet apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm hidden. You can't see me. <laughs> wow, this is a riot, man. Hangover, hang Thanksgiving hangover Monday. Here it's not go. the same without John just like driving us, driving us off into it off of a cliff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't had a good rant. We need to find an article that will induce a good rant. Joff, here. yeah, well, Joff, what are your like normal trigger words for rants? <laughs> oh wow, um, <laughs> I have to think about that for a bit. Well, while you're um, thinking, Noah, do you want to tell us about the UK secure oh, yeah. by de design predictions? Oh, I'm yes, triggered. This now. is actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was right, when I saw the article title for this at first. I was like, oh yes, because passing laws. Saying that you're going to need to make things more secure is super effective historically. Um, but this is actually kind of cool. Um, basically, the, the too long didn't read because I didn't read it all. Um, 
is that the UK passed laws saying that if you're making these IoT devices, you can't ship them out already rooted, and you can't ship them out with a password <laughs> of root root. Um, and they're actually making them harden them to a certain standard before they allow them to go out. So that's but, actually but, kind of kind of neat. But but you probably can ship them out with a password of root and root one, right? Yeah, um, or root or tor. Um, yeah, yeah, right. So I mean, it's it's an attempt. I, I think it's a worthy attempt to kick people in the rear and say, "Hey, stop doing dumb things." Um, but uh, yeah. It, it, it's I will still... say I think Britain is playing with fire, right? How many manufacturers are going to be like, okay, we no longer support the UK market? <laughs> We're just not going right? like, to sell stuff to the they, UK. They already brexited and kind of shot themselves in the foot there. Could this be the next step, right? Where it's like, all right, uh, can we sell this product in the UK? No. All right, well, we don't have twenty million dollars to make it so we can. So sorry, UK people, you can't get a baby camera for less than two thousand dollars. <laughs> You're right, not so allowed for, to buy this Wi-Fi connected air conditioner. Sorry. So Don't for they all have like friends, a national all our friends in the too? UK, I have many friends in the UK. For all our friends in the UK, we're calling this article Brexit 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's IoT Brexit. <laughs> IoT Brexit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. boy. I mean, I don't know. I obviously don't know anything about the UK. I never lived there. Don't have any close friends there. But I do worry when it's like California where they're like, we have super or GDPR is another example. It's like we have super strong laws that affect only our citizens, and then like it's either up to the companies to support that everywhere, to you know to do that, or to just say, well, we can't be in this market anymore because it would cost. Like with GDPR, it's like, okay, we need a crazy you know person that does this, person does this, like someone to investigate all the compliance requirements and make sure we match and get our stamp of approval and pass customs and all that stuff. It costs money in a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the bigger companies will probably do it because UK is a decent sized uh, economy, but it is, you know, the, the effect, you know, it'll be interesting to see if other people follow in their footsteps or if they're just like, uh, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> it's, that or, we'll or, it's that or you might see some more like pop up um, because the market, like the supply would reduce. You'd see these like uh, like GitHub projects. They exist out there. Make your own IoT stuff with like an ESP32 and a uh, few jumper wires to your old air conditioner or coffee pot and you can make it smart as well. They're probably going to ban that. Have you ever that. looked at that code? Like it's scary. Some of that code is absolutely horrifying. So. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised I would think if that would, was banned. I, I, I was going to say, I, I would think it would be better if you're passing legislation. Of course, I don't know how to write legislation. But if you're passing legislation, um, I, I always look at it a little bit like um, writing uh, computer policies, right? Or, or computer environment policies, right? The more prescriptive the uh, policy is, the uh, the less usable it becomes over time. Because And, and this is a classic example of that, right? I mean, what if there is no passwords next year, right? Um, so I, I would think when you're writing legislation, it would be much better to say something vague that offers up market incentives for doing the right thing. Like if you adhere to the latest agency security standard version XYZ, then we will open up this market segment and pay you some sort of financial incentive or something like that, rather than saying thou shalt not use weak passwords <laughs> because that, I, I just don't think that's good policy. Well, let's also talk about how it's enforced, right? It's probably fines, which that just fines how they work is just that's how much it costs to put bad passwords in your product. <laughs> right, right. Like, <laughs> like with the fines cost tens of dollars and the implementation of new password security cost hundreds. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how much does it cost to park here? Oh, it's a, it's, you'll get a parking ticket. So, okay, what is it? How much is the parking ticket? It costs $120 to park here. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. That's, That's why what UPS does, like right? Like, like UPS in in cities, they'll just pay parking tickets because it's cheaper than having the people walk. That like that, I don't know. So that's that's all wrong, right? You need to pass some sort of thing that that leans towards incentivization for doing the right thing instead of you know the stick approach for doing the wrong thing. Um, anyway, just my opinion, but you know they don't pay me to be a politician. It will be so. funny. I mean, now we need a GitHub list of the official UK bad passwords by the government. Oh, well, that's according to Symantec, too. it's one through six. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's I've in heard, the article. I've heard that password one, two, three is a really good choice. 
It says yeah, password 15. or admin, which that's two of my best passwords. So that's right. going to be hard. Yeah, well, see, I bummer. use password one with, with the at symbol for the A. Well, I think it's always important if you're going to use wow. your favorite password of password to actually make sure that the A is an at symbol and the O is a zero because that's liter and not guessable. Yeah, but password true. one with two symbols, that's impossible to guess. That, oh, my God. The UK government will never ban that password. This is, this is snarky central here. Um, okay. Next. Next story. Next story. We get We're still on the hunt to find one to trigger Joff. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to happen. Let's Regulation one more. almost got him. He almost got he, he, <laughs> he, he almost got him. I, I was close. I was I was reaching. I was I was coming up on on the threshold of rant and then i just dove back down again so that's it or if you're going to do the asymptotic approach <laughs> anyway all right guys pick one more we can right, wrap one it more up story. with a bow uh we already talked about the zero day if we never pick uh, one we don't have to end the show guys oh, oh that's on oh. forever wait wait we got to do the arrest one over 1,000 suspects arrested. Because we we talk about people getting hacked all the time on the show and nothing ever comes of it. <laughs> so this can, like, this, be the wait, first this one's time actually had some I interesting that bits in there. They got hacked. But usually we're talking about the, like, like the effect, not the cause, you know. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't know which one you're talking about. 1,000 who, what? The Interpol <laughs> one. Interpol one, okay. I just dropped it in your chat there, Jeff, and it's in the, uh, um, oh, what do you call it? Live chat. Interpol video. arrests over 1,000 suspects linked to cyber crime. Wow. Yes. Which did not include Joff. No. That's well, so we don't know we what Joff did over the weekend. They may have let him go. Yeah, they, they, they might have. Um, well, no, no. Look at the countries. The country is not even like Joff land isn't even in there. Yeah, <laughs> Joff <laughs> land. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the countries are Angola, Brunei, Brunei, Cambodia, Colombia, China, India, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Japan, Korea, Korea Republic of yeah. Korea, not the uh, People's Republic, Laos, yeah. Malaysia, Maldives. Maldives? Who is hacking in Maldives? How do they even have fast internet? <laughs> How do they even have internet? <laughs> uh, like, I imagine the, the I imagine the whole country as just like a bunch of huts on the ocean. <laughs> that, maybe I've seen too many touristy pictures. That's interesting. Singapore, Romania. No one is surprised. Now, this is like the who's who's list of hacking countries. Apparently, <laughs> what, but Maldives made it in there. They're like. How many people even live there? That's the real question. Maybe they got that Starlink hookup. <laughs> Starlink, yeah, they 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 were they're on uh, Elon's most favorite customer list now. That's what it is. They're like, please excuse our our slow hacks. We're on high latency internet. <laughs> so the couple of interesting things in here. One of them is the amounts of some of the figures that were recovered. We got like, what was that eight million, sixteen million, two payments of eight. Not bad. Yeah, I think it was like twenty seven million total, which is, I mean, not bad, but. For, for people saving in these countries, one, that's life-changing money, right? Yeah, saving one firm from bankruptcy. So that's kind of yeah. a big deal. Yeah. And then we've got uh, Squid Game coming up because everybody loves Squid Game these days. And it uh, seems like that's how they were scamming everybody. <laughs> what? They use trend. Squid Game as a theme for malware distribution campaign. I didn't know that malware had themes. Yeah, they we talked now. about this on the on the CoinSec <laughs> podcast, but like a lot of there was actually like a Squid Game rug pull that was just like, "Hey, give us your money, and we're never going to give it back." And that's exactly what they did. <laughs> they just took everyone's money. <laughs> oh, these apps subscribe to premium. When you, when you have the theme, premium. like, does it does it like just change the layout? And then if you get like if you stay a customer of the malware for long enough, you can get multiple themes, and then you can flip flop between the two and. So I, I will say to, to rein to rein you back in a little bit. This is this is more like your traditional fraud scam, not so much malware. It says oh, okay. the crime ins it includes romance scams, investment fraud, money laundering, and online illegal gambling. One of the common campaigns was signing people up for premium services. Uh, they basically would you know distribute an app, 
that is Squid Game and then sign them up for some premium service that, you know, Squid Game Plus is $20 a month and they just hope people don't notice or whatever. But so it's not like some crazy, you know, botnet that they shut down. This is like your normal run of the mill, like let's call it high school grad malware fraud. Yeah, that sounds about right. But, you know, there was a lot of money involved. So that's inter- yeah. it actually shows you the amount of industry that's out there that just doesn't even come close to having the resources to defend themselves from relatively unsophisticated threats, right? And it's depressing when you think about it. It's like there's all these organizations out there that are operating IT infrastructure that don't even have the resource to even think about security, right? And that's that's what's going on. And yeah. I mean, a lot of this is like home users being targeted too. This is like, you know, Trojanized apps and things and investment romance scams. Like, uh, come to my house and I'll pay you $1,000 or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Are you sure that's a romance? Stick to your day job. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a romance (laughs) scam to me. (laughs) Great, great. If anyone that sounds like prostitution. (laughs) Corey, you you hooked me, man. I'll come to your house. (laughs) (laughs) Sweet. All right, here, Joff. Let me put this uh, put this Bitcoin in uh, chat. Hold on. Excellent. Coming over port four four four, of course. Oh, scan my scan my QR code, Joff. Scan this QR code. (laughs) done oh man i uh, don't, don't speaking of qr codes don't don't you hate it that like daytime uh you know news medias and now doing qr codes for various like charitable things and all this stuff it's like what are you guys doing you're basically just teaching people how to fall for fishes it's like, oh yeah oh, i mean gosh. qr code fishing is great with with everything that's gone on recently in that sense because now you can go to just about any restaurant and they have a QR code slam like stamped on the wall somewhere. Yeah, so everyone's like got that thanks. menu or something. Or, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So what all you have to do is just make a QR code that matches that. I actually got in trouble for this in high school at one point. Um, the you made QR the, like, codes in high school. What? You made QR codes in high school? Yes. Jeez, well, how dude, old are you? He was only in high school I, last I, year. Now. I'm only 22. <laughs> Anyhow, um, <laughs> so. In, in high school, we had this, like, all the groups would make QR codes, right? Well, at one point, I decided I was going to be sneaky about it. I made signs that looked exactly like these these groups' QR code pages, except I changed the QR code, and then I rickrolled them. Um, it was great. But, yeah, you can do the same thing now. <laughs> oh, so, is that works. what a romance yeah. scam is? Also, vicarious photo, yes. Yeah, yeah right. another reason that Noah works for Black Hills. <laughs> He rickrolled his high school pals. Also, yes. it is kind of a it's a rite of passage. I would say most hackers have a here's how I got banned from computers or here's how I got blocked off of my school's internet or whatever. You have to have your story of how you. But up. yeah, they never blocked me because my school was so small we didn't actually even have an IT guy, so I was the IT guy. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's what that's what happens. Well, the threat okay, was well, inside. That's kind of cheating. You just add. You just you know you're already in the domain. You just like add the QR code. And see. No, no. I didn't see it wasn't like that they would literally print off these qr codes and like stick them on the wall and then the students would go through and like scan them off the wall and so i just print i use the school printers to print but print a bunch of copies um, that's print fraud paint. that's printer fraud yeah yeah <laughs> yeah what could possibly go wrong anyway that sounds like a great note to wrap things up thanks i think for so things. great great way to end the hangover <laughs> yeah Happy uh, Thanksgiving Hangover Day, everybody. Hope you have cybered appropriately today. And uh, we'll send it over to Ryan to close us out. Hi, we will see you guys board. next week. Say something, Corey. I said hi, Jurassic Age ports on secret ports that no one will ever guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Security tip of the week. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but I'm going to leave it there. See you next week, guys.